Capitol right now, but uh, the, the White House is worried about what's going on down there, and the president has already declared, I think, nine different counties in Florida disaster areas. Yes, and good morning to you. It's a very somber day, I think, with uh, Hurricane Irma still on its path and all of us remembering 9-11, of course. But the president has been in constant contact with the local, federal, and state officials. I think you've seen an administration-wide coordination. Our Democratic senator, U.S. Senator of Florida, Bill Nelson, commended the coordination between federal, state, and local. And I think it tells you that it's a rare moment of uh, bipartisan or nonpartisan comedy, if you will, C-O-M-I-T-Y, as we try to help people rebuild and recover. I know we've all talked about this previously, but it bears uh, repeating that now is when some of the tough work begins for many people. If you don't have power, then you seem to turn to other means of uh, generating power, and that's when there's carbon monoxide poisoning, uh, people being told to evacuate did, people being told not to go back should not. Listen to your local officials. That's our big message from the White House, is those on the ground closest to the people in need and also in still in jeopardy really should listen to those local officials. Don't allow curiosity and even your grief to get in the way of your safety. Kelly, and the president said he told some reporters that he was going to go visit Florida very soon. Any plans on when he and Melania might go down there? Well, the president is committed to uh, helping all of those affected, uh, certainly those still struggling to uh, survive and, and, and rebuild from Hurricane Harvey and now Irma. And as you know, he visited uh, Texas twice and Louisiana, so he's committed to going to Florida. But the president makes very clear that he will go to Florida and other affected areas, Ainsley, if and when when people closer on the ground say it's good, governor, it's, a good, it's good to go, and, and that he's not interfering with the rescue efforts and the recovery efforts. Mm -hmm. So that's incredibly important. And as Governor Scott said on a different network, in your network this weekend, I believe um, that he's been in constant contact with the president and other cabinet officials. I also want people to really look at what the entire administration is doing. I mean, obviously, you've had Elaine Duke and FEMA and Brock Long on your, on your network. But if everybody sees all of the different resources the government provides, the small business help from Linda McMahon's administration, the uh, what Alex Acosta is doing at Labor, obviously Tom Price at Health and Human Services. There's just an administration-wide effort to help people in times of need. And I, I think with social media, uh, we're seeing the ability to connect folks with opportunity mm -hmm. and to, to meet their needs faster. And really the forecasting and technological advances has helped a great deal too, probably spared some lives. And of course, any loss of life is a great tragedy, but sparing the loss of life and injury here because of the forecasting technology, I think the very somber but very um, encouraging way that the governors of the states and, uh, and others have told people, please evacuate, uh, please get out, and, and many pe most people listened, it seems. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, there's a lot of firsts when you become president, Kelly and Conway, but it must be extraordinary for the president of the United States to be a New Yorker on 9-11, 16 years later, he is president. Have you had a chance over the last few days to talk about what today will mean? Because at 8.46, he and, he and the First Lady will lead a moment of silence and remembrance. He was once one of us here in New York, and now he's leading us in Washington. Did you have a chance to go over that? Uh, the president and I have discussed 9-11 at different uh, junctures many times. And, you know, it really was a national tragedy, an international moment of, I think, introspection and reflection. But it did, you know, those here at the Pentagon across the river, um, obviously in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where Flight 93 went down, where, where we lost life there, where the vice president and Mrs. Pence will be today. And then certainly at the towers uh, where... For th I think close to 3,000 Americans and, and people from all over the world were killed. It, it is, you know, there's a certain, um, there's a certain gravity that comes with this job every day, but there's a certain gravity, I think, in reflection that attends to any 9-11 remembrance. And uh, as you know, the President and First Lady will be at the Pentagon uh, to help us all reflect. It was such a moment, though, of camaraderie and civility and compassion, really confusion, as, as we all know, who lived in New York. Um, I remember I was a newlywed. I actually was in the Longworth building speaking to the high school interns mm. of Congressman Porter Goss, who became the head of the CIA shortly thereafter. And my new husband got on what was the last shuttle from D.C. to LaGuardia. And so many people have so many stories from that day. But if you just remember, we, we, we always remember, we will never forget those who lost their lives that day and their families. They're enshrined in our hearts forever. But we also should remember all the acts of heroism and camaraderie that sprung up because the post 9-11 camaraderie seems to be wanting uh, these days. So maybe uh, here and there, whether it's hurricane recovery, reflecting on 9-11, uh, thinking of all these nonpartisan issues, starving for bipartisan moments of reflection and solution. Today's a good day for that, if I may.
I think, Kellyanne, I know, I know we were all together. We were united after September the 11th. I think America has pulled together to, to help these folks who have been impacted by Harvey. Yes. And now by what's going on down in Florida. I, I know that uh, they have passed, the Congress has passed something like $15 billion worth of uh, money help for the folks in both those states. Do you imagine that number is going to go higher with another bite of the apple and more cash? Well, the president addressed this himself last night as, as he and the first lady returned from Camp David. He was asked by someone in the press corps uh, something about the funding, and his remark was, right now we're not we're talking about money, we're talking about lives. You know, we're worried about people, in other words. And uh, obviously, there will be untold billions of dollars in property damage, and we don't know. Uh, we just can't look around the corner right now and know what that means. But the president has made very clear that he and his administration in this Congress, and we hope that includes people from all political persuasions and across many different industries across this country, where the, the non-government officials and the private sector are really stepping up also. The volunteerism and the donations from Americans is incredibly helpful, and we certainly encourage folks to continue to do that as they see fit, as they feel comfortable. But this president made very clear just yesterday, arriving from Camp David back to the White House, that right now we're talking about lives and those who are suffering and the survivors uh, right. and that we will be there for them. Yeah. Kellyanne, I noticed at Camp David they said all the secretaries were there. Could you give us, can you bring us inside or around that table? Did the secretaries have to give a presentation to, almost to the president of where they're at and what they want to accomplish? Was that part of the reason to be there? Well, it was very conversational, but there were a lot of briefings, too, on the impact of the hurricanes. Um, we know Hurricane Jose is also very much in the sights. Uh, we've got many people have given briefings on that as well. Our Homeland Security Advisor, uh, FEMA, obviously, the Department of Homeland Security. So everybody is keeping a watchful eye on that. But also, this is a very active cabinet, a hand-picked cabinet. Uh, even some of the biggest critics have talked about the, the seriousness and, and the life experience and, and the very uh, brilliant men and women who serve in this cabinet, how committed they are. So it's a very active cabinet. They travel uh, regularly and they're all working on their different portfolios. So they had an opportunity to brief the president, the vice president, also on what they're doing and what's ahead for them. Uh, but also, I think this is just a moment given the hurricanes, back-to-back -back hurricanes, of what that means administration-wise. I mean, everybody has a role in this, energy, EPA, transportation. It really goes right down the line. And so to look at all those different moving parts, I think that's also why you saw the president, the vice president, with cabinet officials when they visited Texas and Louisiana. And I'm sure you can expect that on any upcoming trip to Florida, so that people understand it's not just coming from the White House, it's administration-wide. And may I say, even those who are big critics of the role of the federal government in our lives, how intrusive invasive, expensive, and expansive it can be. Uh, they, they like the fact, people like the fact that the government is there in times like this, that the government can, that the Congress can pass with very few exceptions, major funding for those in need, that the response and coordination efforts among your federal, state, and local officials, people say, many people say that's precisely one of the, one of the very core and essential functions they want the government to perform. Absolutely, and this is when the federal government coordinates with the local municipalities and the states to try to help as many people as possible. Uh -huh. Kellyanne, thank you very much for joining us thank on this. Thank you for having me. Thanks, September Kelly. the 11th, and we've, uh, while she was chatting, we uh, are starting to see some of the images out of the Ground Zero area, where uh, just about 40 minutes from right now, uh, they will begin with the first of six moments of silence. Jay Johnson was uh, clearly in that shot. The phone.